Welcome to Today at Sightport. I am your gracious host, Greg Andrews, the Planetarium Manager. In this series of videos, we will be looking at different parts of Sightport's Space Center. The Space Center houses over 50 different space exhibits, including the Dana and Ronald L. Sawyer Space Stone Planetarium, the Peggy and Joe Averett Observatory, the Frank's Foundation Solarium, and our iconic Foucault Pendulum that was sponsored by the Anderson Vizel family. So stay tuned as we explore these and much more. This series of videos is made possible in part through a grant from Verizon Wireless. We want to extend our gratitude and a big thank you for their sponsorship. Hi, welcome to Today at Cyport. Today, we're going to be talking about the planet Mars and specifically looking at the exploration of Mars. Uh, you heard about last month how we mentioned that there were literally several spacecraft that were being sent to Mars. And I'm thankful to report back that all three missions that were sent to Mars were successful in terms of their arrival. So two of these particular missions were actually orbiters and the third one was actually a lander. So before I begin talking about those, just to give you a brief synopsis of the history of the exploration of Mars. Uh, Mars has been looked at, again, through a telescope, or I should say visually first with the eye, then through a telescope, and then finally through the uses of spacecraft. And here you'll see that we actually have what is called um, some pictures and stuff that were taken by a couple of spacecraft. But the first spacecraft that went to Mars, which was kind of cool, I'm going to come back here, was 1960. So from 1960 to the year 2021, you can do the math and figure out how many years that is. But I will tell you, we have sent a variety of different spacecraft to Mars. Uh, usually when it comes to a spacecraft, again, there's what you would call an orbiter or a probe or a lander and then you have a rover. Uh, just to give you a quick synopsis, the orbiter does just that. It goes around Mars, so it doesn't land. You have what is called a lander that actually goes and it lands on the surface of Mars, but then it doesn't go anywhere, so it's stationary. And then you would have what is called a rover, and that is you land on Mars and then you rove, or what you call explore Mars, literally move, and so you are a mobile platform. And so we've had a combination of those type of explorations taking place on Mars. Uh, one of my favorite ones was the Mars Climate Orbiter. And what happened with the Mars Climate Orbiter is it arrived at Mars, but we lost signal upon its arrival. And it turns out what happened is it literally crashed. There was an error in terms of using of, of calculations that and what that happened to us, there was a failure to convert English units into metric units. And this is something that's very, very viable when you are working and collaborating with other nations or other countries or other corporations. It's what unit are you using? So because of that unfortunate um, lack of conversion, it literally caused this particular spacecraft, the Mars Climate Orbiter, to crash land upon arrival. When it comes to talking about the most recent ventures to Mars, uh, we're going to start off first with looking at the HOPE mission. The HOPE mission was actually sponsored by the United Arab Emirates nation. And so the UAE is what they, is, is the acronym for it. And this was their first time that this country was actually able to send and land and send something successfully to Mars. And the purpose of the HOPE mission is to be able to examine the atmosphere of Mars in a different way. So the HOPE probe or the HOPE orbiter actually has uh, different sets of filters on it. And as it, it's orbiting Mars, it's going to be taking pictures of the atmosphere. And because it's using, first of all, updated technology and then also a different type of filtering or what you call narrow band filter, that will allow us to actually view different aspects of Mars that we haven't been able to see before. The next mission that 
was that arrived was known as the Tianwen number one. And this was a spacecraft that is from China. So this is not China's first successful mission. They've actually uh, sent other space probes before in the past that have been successful. But this particular one is very unusual in that it actually has its orbiting phase, and then it also has a lander and a rover. So this will be the first time for any country, for humanity in general, to actually send something to Mars that is both going to A, orbit, and also land and roll on the planet. So it's literally taking all three phases of exploration and, and combining them into one. Super prodigious type of achievement, and so far, so good. Um, why do we need to do this? Well, first of all, it's kind of cool to be able to send stuff to Mars, right? The second thing is exploring Mars, it's, it's not just a one-time thing, okay? Because first of all, Mars is a big planet and there is a variety of aspects on this planet that are, you truly need to be able to explore. So with this particular mission from China, it's going to be taking, looking at different features that we know that were created by water but then also doing something which I think is cool, it's going to be using what you call subsurface radar for the first time. We have had spacecraft that have looked at the surface of Mars, but this is going to be using radar to literally, if you will, penetrate and study the terrain of Mars. And then last but not least was the Perseverance rover. And this was one that was actually guided by NASA personnel. And so this particular rover is known as the Perseverance and it landed successfully on February 18th. Now, between then and now, the Perseverance has already started to provide a tidbits of information. And one of the first things it did after it arrived is it took a snapshot of its field of view and basically a panorama. And when you look at this panoramic view from Mars, from the Mars 2020 rover, or basically the Perseverance rover, there's already details. There are formations that already have scientists excited. So as you go, scroll through and pan around on this image, there is a rock crop that just kind of stands out. And it's weird because when you look at everywhere else in the terrain, it's kind of flat. And then this jutting rock is just sort of standing out there in a very prominent way. How did that happen? Why did that happen? And as you look at the rocks that are just, as you scan around, you look at the rocks, you'll notice that most of them are, they've actually determined are already volcanic rocks, but not all of them, are, okay? So when it comes to rocks, you have three types of basic rocks, uh, sedimentary, metamorphic, and what's the igneous. igneous rocks. Yeah, that's it, right? I was thinking volcanic, but igneous rock, right? Now, by this time already, the Perseverance has driven on Mars, and so it's sort of already made its first trek. And if you go to, again, on that website, Mars 2020, there is a cool video that shows its wheel tracks in, uh, in the dirt. And so shortly after it did, it finished doing a systems check. It said, hey, let's just take myself out for a little spin, a little test drive, just to make sure everything is up and running and going. And so it did that. I don't see, ooh, 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 okay, okay, hold up. Let me show you this. This is an Easter egg, right? All right, if you look at the wheel tracks, you notice that the treads are normal, right? Not a problem. Why do I say that? Because if you ever get the opportunity to go look at the rover's spirit and opportunity. If you look at their tracks that they make in the land or in the terrain of Mars, you'll find out there's a series, uh, re repetitive series of lines, okay? It stands out from the usual tracks that are in the wheels. And what it is, is actually Morse code for JPL. You find out that JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, um, created the wheels for Spirit and Opportunity. So they sort of put their stamp, if you will, on the wheels by putting within the tread the Morse code signals for JPL. So that's something that's kind of cool. So why does that happen? Well, believe it or not, 
there is another yet, if you will, Easter egg that is contained under perse perseverance, okay? One of those Easter eggs actually happens to do with the parachute, the underside of the parachute. And those patterns that you see, those orange and white patterns, are actually a code for a quote that comes from NASA. So I'm gonna, if you can figure out what that is, right, make sure you comment or post it below so others can see it though. Now, one of my favorite parts about the Perseverance is actually, it's what you call the piggybacked rover that's on it, if you will. And this is something that's called the Ingenuity. And so this is, the Ingenuity is a helicopter. So for the first time, if everything goes right, we are actually going to fly an actual helicopter on the planet of Mars. So this is something that has never been done before at all, let alone on another planet. So you, there's all kind of great animations. They want to, the first flight is going to be, hey, turn on and then lift up, hover there for a few seconds and then come back down and land safely. So the ingenuity, again, is sort of piggybacked onto the rover. So it's going to be detached and then set aside. The rover's going to drive a little bit away to kind of give it some distance between the helicopter ingenuity and Perseverance itself. And then the ingenuity, ingenuity is going to kickstart its own series of missions. So the first couple of missions are actually going to be just test flight, right? Seeing how well it flies within the Martian environment. And this is interesting because Again, the way we talked about in our uh, previous videos, that the Martian atmosphere is very tenuous, it's very light compared to um, the atmosphere of Earth. So how do you fly in, you know, on Earth, the atmosphere is something we can account for very easily because we have it all around us. But on Mars, you can't really do that. So that's why going back to, to the other per probes that we mentioned, the HOPE probe, as well as the Tianwen, uh, number one uh, mission. That's why studying the atmosphere is so crucial because we want to be able to send spacecraft to do multiple things or send rovers to do multiple things, including flights. Um, today's session, I think, was uh, incredible. We talked about the exploration of Mars, some of the past missions and the present missions, and then hopefully, if we can at another time, perhaps come to talk about the future missions. Uh, speaking of future missions, I do have to put this in. The Perseverance is actually phase one, okay? And what I mean by that is we have that rover now, and it's going to start doing all this wonderful scientific work but there's actually two other phases that are going to go with the perseverance, okay? So those are going to be part of future missions, and I don't have time to talk about those. You can more than welcome those, again, to ask questions or do, do some research on your own and find out what those are about. It's really cool. Thank you for checking out another episode of Today at SciPort. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them below in the comments section, or you can always email me at gandrews at cyport.org. This series of videos is made possible in part through a grant from Verizon Wireless. We want to again extend our sincere gratitude for their sponsorship. Thank you so much again for joining us, and I hope to see you next time on Today at Cyport.